part two of our interviews from the UCLA Health System in Los Angeles, we continue discussions about how medical laboratory professionals are combating the COVID-19 pandemic. ASCP CEO, Dr. E. Blair Holiday speaks with clinical microbiologist, Stephanie Horiichi about how rewarding it is to be working behind the scenes to tackle this pandemic head on and support patients who are battling COVID-19. Meanwhile, ASCP past president, Dr. Lee Hilburn, a professor of pathology and laboratory medicine at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, talks about the importance of having a strong laboratory infrastructure in order to protect people across the country. What a thrill to be able to sit down with Stephanie Horiichi, who is a specialist in microbiology, just recently certified by the ASCP with this designation, and she is right here in the crosshairs of this epicenter in LA dealing with this particular pandemic. You're at the beginning of your career, I'm sure you had no idea this was what it was going to be like and what you were going to be facing. I definitely never thought in my lifetime I would experience a pandemic in my career. But mm. being here, it gave me the opportunity to do as much as I can in terms of getting a test out that we can use for just public health and calming like our patients down and everything. And it was, it's a really, really interesting and rewarding experience. How prepared were you after you finished that examination, after you were certified, in order to go into practice to be a specialist, to basically tackle this pandemic straight on? Were you, did you feel like you had the appropriate training credentialing and did you feel like that you were ready to take this on full face? Actually, yes, I really felt very prepared. I was lucky enough to be educated here at Brentwood in the microbiology lab and Everyone here has so much knowledge and experience from just any facet of microbiology that I felt that I have an incredibly strong foundation in this subject matter because it's a really finite area to work in. So with my initial foundation that I got from them, I felt comfortable going through and you know, going further and taking the exam, becoming a specialist in micro. Very long days, right. not gonna lie, very, very long days. But it's, it's rewarding, like it's rewarding time that I'm here because I know the importance of what I'm doing and I know the importance of what needs to be done. So the time that I am here, it does go by very fast because you look up at the clock and you're like, oh, it's 9 p.m. You know? And then when I go home, it's just eat and go to sleep and then rinse and repeat. <laughs> right. Stephanie, uh, tell me a little bit about the people you work with, your lab team, um, your supportive staff structure. The team that I'm a part of is fantastic. All of them are ready and willing to go and learn and do this test whenever, or any test for that matter, whenever the challenge arises. Um, a lot of us are trying to figure out our schedule and who can cover for who, and we make sure that, you know, like, hey, did you get your break? Did you eat yet? So it's, it's really a supportive team that we have here, and I'm really grateful to be a part of it. So Stephanie, can you imagine have choosing or have chosen another career path when you were in elementary school through college, your four years of undergraduate education, do you think you made the right choice? Absolutely. I don't think I would have ever wanted to do anything different than being a clinical microbiologist. I've wanted to be a clinical microbiologist since, since I was very young. I was always inspired to help people because of my upbringing. And I feel like I carried that over into my career, my career path. And I feel that this is a really important area of work that we all do as microbiologists. And to just serve patients every day and to know that I'm helping someone, it, it really warms my soul. <laughs> what would your advice be to somebody in a university interested in pursuing a career in medicine to persuade them to go into uh, medical laboratory sciences? The first thing you should do is volunteer. Try to get yourself into a clinical laboratory to see what it's all about. And then there's other resources too that people can find like the SCASM, the Southern California um, Microbiology Association and even ASM, things like those kind of organizations, like you reach out to members in there because everybody's always willing to give you their experiences and I feel like those experiences can help 
help people make the decision to stay in the clinical microbiology field or even continue in going on into there because there's, there's always something new, there's always something to learn, and there's always someone to help. Well, ASCP wants to thank you for taking your time, one, to be prepared through the examination from the Board of Certification, to pass it successfully, to practice as a specialist in microbiology, and to save lives here in the community for which you serve. Thank you again, Stephanie. Thank you. So it is an absolute privilege to be able to sit down with one of the nation's emissaries, thought leaders in pathology and laboratory medicine, that's Dr. Lee Hilborn, who fearlessly and tirelessly is an advocate for both pathology and laboratory medicine in the United States, but also for public policy, both here in his local community, across the nation, as well as for the American Society for Clinical Pathology. Lee, from your perspective, from a public policy standpoint, what are the implications of what's happening on our community of practitioners? What are the implications that are happening at the government level that we and you can help us shepherd better potential public policies downstream? Well, for years, we were on the last page of the newspaper. You don't have to look anywhere right now. We're on the front page, and the importance of testing has risen to the top because the thing that will control this epidemic is going to be our ability to test and identify patients with disease. So here's an opportunity, a policy opportunity, for us to send the message loud and clear how important laboratory medicine is to the community, to the public health, and to the future of this country and the world. To think about specific recommendations, if you were, you've got a call in, I'd say, the next 10 minutes from either Deborah Burks or, of course, um, Fauci. What recommendations would you make to either one of those individuals and for you as the scientist to help us meet our, our, our current pandemic? Gee, the first thing I would do is thank them. I'd thank them for providing a uh, glimmer of truth and consistency in what we're hearing in the country. And I think that what we've seen is around the CDC, the FDA, and our government officials, the scientists, there's been a resonance that, in fact, that uh, we're doing the right thing. I think that what we've seen is discussion of regulation, which has been very tight on our clinical laboratories. And what I would hope is that this will be a cause to go back, revisit, and determine what kinds of regulations we really need and what kinds of regula regulations, in fact, only um, impede our ability to deliver high quality laboratory tests in a very short period. I've, I've heard you say, let the scientists do the science. Explain what you mean by that. What we've seen recently is the scientists taking charge, and I think that the community is, is recognizing now how important it is to let the scientists do the science. This is a time for us to come together as, as scientists to do the right thing. And the scientists that they're calling are the laboratory professionals. Have you ever seen anything like this before? And if so, make a comparison. Those of us in laboratory medicine have known for decades how important it is to have a good, strong laboratory infrastructure with trained laboratory professionals. Laboratory medicine is important for the protection of people across the country. For the first time, we believe, in the history of many of our careers, has been front and center, and patients understand now the vital role that you play. How satisfying is that in your career? I think it's very satisfying. It's glad, it's, it's wonderful to see people now recognizing how important testing is, but more importantly, how important our laboratory professionals are to making that happen. Now I think the challenge for us is to capture that enthusiasm for the value of laboratory medicine and drive some policy changes to assure that the next generation is available to do testing and that laboratories are recognized on an ongoing basis for the services that they clearly provide. Why are you so passionate about the team? What is it about you've learned through your career and you've always been an advocate to provide that approach that it takes a hand-in-glove relationship between physicians and non-physician practitioners in order to meet the needs of patient care? Well, I think all, all along it's been clear that none of us have all the skills to do everything that needs to be done. And the only way it's going to be done is for us to come together and for us to be effective as a team to leverage each of our skills for the greater good. That that includes not just 
our laboratory team, but how our laboratory team interfaces with our, our hospital administration, with our medical staff, and so on. We should reflect on ASCP's uh, by, byline that we're stronger together. And I think that this is one opportunity that clearly highlights how important it is for our laboratory professionals and our pathologists and the entire laboratory team to function together. When we do that, we will be the strongest we can possibly be.